instead of being a trend follower instead of oh like a like a like a loose puppy you know like a happy puppy <laughs> You just think with your with your business mind. And this from two weeks ago, 36k views. So we're doing much better than me. Um, so this guy should be, I don't know, a, much better, right? All right, let's go. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the story of why I switched from JavaScript slash TypeScript to Rust. And hopefully it will help you make a more informed decision. At the end of the video, I'll also reflect on that decision and talk about whether switching to Rust was a mistake or not. I started my software development career working at a startup where we built a web app using Node.js for the backend of and Angular version one for the front end. <sighs> no! <laughs> Angular, do you remember that guys? Angular, man, that was, that's that's a long time ago. And I, I didn't like that, man. Uh, I'm so happy with React and all that other stuff, Svelte, but Angular was so, even Vue, Vue was actually good, but Angular, man, ugh. <clears throat> Yikes. No, 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 no. Having the flexibility of JavaScript coupled with a type safety layer allowed us both to quickly prototype and ship maintainable production ready code. It felt like go Yeah, like, like he mentioned, right? That's what I'm always saying to quickly prototype and ship production ready code. That's so important as a startup. A lot of people forget this. On Twitter, also, uh, I can see people uh, tweeting, uh, I'm making a startup in Rust. With Rust, it's like you're complete. You're broken. You know what I mean? This, 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 this is not the way to go, right? Um, JavaScript, TypeScript, Node.js, React, all that stuff. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Put it online, ship it, tag it and bag it, take the money, and sip margaritas on the beach. We explored different ideas for getting rid of the duplication, and one of the ideas was to rewrite the common logic in a language that could be integrated in all our code bases, which included backend services and frontend clients. One language that was being considered was Rust. This was the first time I ever heard of Rust, and because my team was considering using it, and the most senior engineers on my team were enthusiastic about the language, I decided- Yeah, of course they are. They are they, of course they are enthusiastic. Everybody is. It's like all these, 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 uh, it's the same with Discord, right? They, they, re, they rewrote uh, their, their stuff also in Rust because the senior, the seniors were enthusiastic about it. They, they had back their developer the happiness. It's, it's these guys, right? They, 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 they're sitting in their job. They're writing this JavaScript. They're writing Go. They're writing Ruby. They're writing Python for all these years. Day in, day out. It's boring, right? They, their life sucks. They get in a little bit of money. You know what I mean? They, 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 and suddenly there is Rust, right? A new language is kind of okay, right? It's, it's, it's okay. It's a good language. It's a syntax. You can do a lot of stuff. Of course, you're going to be... It's something new. It's the same thing with a marriage. You know what I mean? If you're uh, together for 10 years, of course you're gonna get fucking a boner if you see a beautiful girl with these nice tits and beautiful clothes. You know what I mean? Like, mm, mm. Of course. But that's gonna fuck up your life. You know what I mean? Because your wife's gonna leave you and your kid's gonna be angry. She's gonna take all your money. And she's probably gonna sip margaritas on the beach. The more I looked into Rust, the more excited I got about the language. I tried to learn a low level programming language before C++ to be specific. And let's just say the experience was not enjoyable, but I was optimistic of about Rust not. because developers in the Rust community seem to really enjoy programming in Rust. After a few weeks of thought and investigation, I decided to start learning Rust myself. And these are some of the reasons why. First of all, there was a lot of hype around Rust. Senior engineers on my team were raving yeah, of about course. it. Again. The Stack Overflow survey showed that- Of course, of course, everybody said, uh, yeah, man, yeah. Of course, guys, everybody's hyped. It's a hype. I said, it's a hype. It's a good language, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, because I'm going to get pitchfork. People are going to kill me, or maybe I'm going to kill him. I don't know, but something's going to happen. Blood is going to, is going to flow on the street, but Rust is not a bad language. It's a little bit overhyped and a little bit overused by people. That it, it, if I would do something and I need to ch and I need to pick C or Rust, I'm probably gonna use Rust, right? Because C doesn't make also any sense. That's true. Rust makes sense. 
but I'm not gonna write a simple backend service that's just gonna fetch some stuff and yada yada in Rust. That's not gonna happen. And that's what a lot of people don't realize and they're just doing Rust because it's Rust. Right? Famously released a stat saying that 70% of their security vulnerabilities were caused by memory safety issues, which just goes to show that even with the best engineers in the world, manual memory management is extremely error prone and telling developers to be better is not the solution. But Rust also solved another really important pain point. Rust is a low that rust solves these memory these memory issues that's what that's that's true right they, they, that's that's a fact in c c c plus plus you can do a lot of nasty stuff um and i'm basically 100 percent convinced that the rust is going to save these issues for sure it is what it is we need we need to be um we need to be we need to be we need to be honest here right so that's true Security vulnerabilities and all that stuff. Um, hey, completely agree. Low level Rust, on the other hand, comes with a build tool and package manager included. And it has a public True. package registry called crates.io. Yeah, cargo, crate, muy bien. Which is very similar to NPM. For someone like me coming from a web development background, this made Rust very accessible. Rust also has a few other things that make it very accessible, namely great error messages, great documentation, and great free resources like the Rust Lane book. Because Rust True. is so accessible, I thought to myself, but, uh, this is going to open up. I'm going to say something. When I was writing Rust, it's a long, long time ago. Uh, the error messages were not good. Uh, the borrow checker was a complete hell. Uh, back in the day, it's a long, long time. Not, not it, borrow checker is a borrow checker, of course, but um, the messages and all that stuff was a complete, complete, complete hell. Uh, yeah, but now it's good. Like a sync, a wait stuff in Rust didn't, didn't, didn't happen. Uh, Tokyo didn't exist it, uh, and all that stuff. So hey, that's how far I come from, right? Uh, when I was writing Rust, but now it's a lot of better. So he's right, right? Good tooling, good everything. But still, that doesn't make. That doesn't make up that you need to write your web server or your your uh, your request handlers or some simple application in Rust, right? It doesn't matter. That, that doesn't. That's no excuse for to learn Rust, of course. But for production, I don't think so. Systems programming to a whole new demographic of developers, and because of that, it was going to be a game changer for low-level programming. Now, those were some of the external factors that convinced me to learn Rust. But I also had a few personal reasons. I saw that Rust had a lot of momentum and it was still the early stages of a big wave. I thought to myself, if I can catch this wave early, uh, it can have a big you're, you're, in No, the no, 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 my man. You're just a trend. You're a trend follower, just like everybody else. You know what I mean? You're no Sigma. <laughs> Guys, listen, it's like, that's what everybody does, right? Everybody thinks, okay, Rust is going to be popular. Rust, why? Oh, hipster, hipster, hipster. But nobody is writing Rust in production, right? Was doing that. I, I wrote Rust in production, but majority majority of these influencers they, they, they don't write the Rust in production. You know what I mean? It's all about oh I want to learn Rust because Rust is such a good language, but I actually don't make any money with it. Okay, cool. And that's that's basically it, right? I, I don't need to explain more. You know what I mean? Uh, instead of thinking with your Instead of being a trend follower, instead of oh, like a like a like a loose puppy, you know, like a happy puppy, <laughs> you just think with your with your business mind and just learn what's actually what's actually people are looking for, and they are they are not looking for as developers right now. You know what I mean? But that's not true. At shut. Hey, it's fine. You can say whatever the fuck you want, right? Um, it is what it is. If you want to learn Rust and you don't know C plus plus, learn C plus plus and C first. Learn the basics of computer programming, and then you can learn Rust because then it's going to make much more sense to you what's happening there and why it's happening. Because all of these TypeScript devs, JavaScript devs, they don't they don't know what system programming is. They don't know. They never wrote a programming in C. Maybe at their high school, a couple, uh, but as high school code, that's not the same. They don't know what it is to suffer. They don't know what it is to to look these things up, to see this deep this code, to debug the C code, the C plus plus program, these complex programs and in, in these languages. They don't know what memory layouts and all that stuff is. You know what I mean? Padding. They don't know what it is. What's padding? Oh yeah, that's the border of your screen. No man, not that padding. You silly. You know what I mean? They don't know that. That's, they need to do that first and then they can write Rust because then it will make sense. Why switch from JS to Rust? There is no switch. There is never, listen, and th there is no switch 
to be made from JavaScript to Rust. There is, a, there is a switch to be made from C or C++ to Rust. You know what I mean? JavaScript and Rust are two completely different languages. Their use case is completely different. And that's, again, a lot of these programmers, they don't get it, right? They don't understand it. They, they, they cannot. And I, I'm saying this all the fucking time, right? Uh, every programming language makes sense for a specific use case. Like I said, before we, we did this reaction, we were basically making our, multi, our multiplayer game server in Go because it makes sense. The game itself will not be in Go. Why? Because it not makes sense. Are we going to do that in Rust? Why? Because it makes sense. You know what I mean? And if you want to be, if you're a JavaScript or a TypeScript dev and you want to learn Rust, go back, go first to C and C++ and learn the things about memory. Learn why C and C++ are terrible. Terrible. Compare, you know what I mean, right? Why? Why is Rust a thing? Why could be Rust a thing? They don't know that. They have no clue why. First suffer in C and C++ and then write Rust and then learn Rust and then you're gonna, your, your world is going to be completely different.